let's talk about Coca-Cola. So that's one of the sprays that you're recommending. So what does Coca-Cola do? How do you put it in any old sprayer? And won't it make your sprayer sticky? And won't it attract ants? How are you gonna, how am I supposed to spray with Coca-Cola? <laughs> well, um, first of all, you should never apply Coca-Cola directly undiluted to a tree because obviously it's too acidic. It's too corrosive for the same reason it cleans battery acids. And we it, it will always need to be diluted to at a rate of, let's just say approximately four ounces per gallon of water. As I mentioned, it is a form of readily digestible sugar and phosphorus. And phosphorus is very often one of the limiting factors that really limits plant development, particularly in urban and, and uh, urban environments. So, and plants respond very positively to it. So can you give me another homemade foliar spray that might be helpful for growers? There's a number of different in potential ingredients that we could talk about, but one of the pieces that we spoke about was the value and the importance of the microbial community on the leaf surface. So I think um, perhaps one of my most favorite recommendations would be to use a live culture yogurt or kefir or any type of lactobacillus culture that you have an actual live culture and apply that as a foliar spray again at a rate of about two to four ounces mixed into a gallon of water and you can this is a very effective tool particularly to prevent uh, the infection of bacterial diseases so I first came across this as an idea when we had in our small home orchard where we had a dozen or so peach trees, where we had uh, this invasion of peach leaf curl that became a tremendous problem. And um, I was thinking about what I might be able to use very quickly that I might have at home and not need to go buy something. And I came up with the idea of using yogurt. So we made our own homemade yogurt I put on a foliar spray of yogurt once every, I think I wanna say it's once every four days for three or four applications because the trees were very badly infected. The infection completely cleared up and peach leaf curl disappeared. And we've now repeated that experience any number of times on different orchards, including even commercial uh, orchards because that is one of the diseases for which there is not really any effective treatment organically. And it just so happens that this treatment is very effective and it's easy and its effectiveness comes about as a result of recolonizing the leaf surface with healthy bacteria and essentially outcompeting those that could be potential pathogens. Let's do another one. One you wrote here is apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar is an interesting um, compound and it might be more relevant for vegetable production than for tree fruit production. But uh, its relevance comes, first of all, it's, it uh, is a probiotic and a prebiotic similar to yogurt. It will enhance uh, microbial populations on the leaf surface, which can be very valuable. But its content of acetic acid, if you apply it again in rates in the neighborhood of two to four ounces per gallon of, of solution, um, it can actually trigger bud development of reproductive buds. So if you have a plant or a tree that is not setting flowers and isn't flowering, you want to, uh, you need to know when the timing is for when that particular species sets buds. So for many fruit trees, um, the reproductive buds are actually set the year prior. Um, so for cherries and apples, for example, the buds would often be set in the June, July time period is when bud initiation happens for next year's crop. So um, at those periods of time, when we have the bud initiation, putting on a foliar application of apple cider vinegar can actually trigger bud initiation and bud development. So if we have a tree that isn't flowering, isn't reproducing, that can be a very useful tool. Uh, the same is also true of vegetable plants. If we have tomato plants that are six feet tall and lush green with lots of foliage, but not a single tomato, putting on foliar applications of apple cider vinegar can help switch that. Give us one more spray that you think was, would be really useful for people. Uh, one additional spray that would be really useful, we spoke a little bit about sugar in the context of, of Coca-Cola. We might also consider blackstrap molasses. And blackstrap molasses can be particularly valuable because it is a good source of iron. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really interesting. 
Uh, there are three different nutrients which will turn plants dark green. Those are nitrogen, magnesium, and iron. And each of those three contributes to the development of chlorophyll and increases chlorophyll concentrations, which of course allows plants to uh, leaves to intercept more sunlight and photosynthesize more successfully. The greatest crop responses come about as a result of a balance of all three of those. So it's common in conventional agriculture, for example, to over apply nitrogen, but not to address magnesium and iron to correspond. So if we address all three of those at the same time is when we produce the greatest crop responses. So blackstrap molasses can be a great source of iron. And then to address the magnesium component, I would suggest Epsom salts. In fact, I'm such a big fan of Epsom salts, magnesium sulfate, that uh, which is in most people's bathroom or it should be if it's not. And um, I'm such a fan of Epsom salts that I think it should be in every foliar spray at low doses. So somewhere in the neighborhood of a half an ounce of the crystals per gallon of water should be a part of every foliar spray because of the impact that it has on plant health and improving photosynthesis. Well, that, that leads me to another question. To what extent can we mix and match? You know, put in a little yogurt, full fat, put in a little molasses, put in a little vegetable oil and top it off with some Epsom salts all in one sprayer, mix it with water. How would that work? That works incredibly well. Combinations are much more effective than individual products by themselves. The only caution uh, that I mentioned back at the beginning is to avoid um, a total of all the ingredients greater than eight ounces per gallon. Anything less than that, you should be fine. And greater than that, you have the potential for leaf burning. 